So this year for Christmas I had to make a cake and it needed a gingerbread house on top of the cake. I was being a little bit lazy and saw this box and I decided to buy it and test it at the same time. If you like this type of tutorial, feel free to subscribe to my channel. All links are posted in the comment box below. Also, make sure to hit the notification bell to make sure you receive notifications. I haven't bought one of these houses in probably around 25 years, so I didn't remember that they come pre-built. I thought they didn't, but I was a little bit surprised that they are already pre-built. I do remember that the royal icing used to come in powder form and now it comes already mixed. It comes also with a piping bag and decorations for the house. Here is the house and as you can see it comes wrapped in plastic and it has a lot of royal icing that they use for the glue which is something I don't like because it looks really weird when you're decorating it. But let's face it, this is mostly bought for kids. And then you have some adults that don't want to bake and want something fast and easy. In the box you will find three bags of sprinkles, one of dredges, another of stars, some rounds, and some sugar crystals with it. You will have a small amount of fondant in here and a piping tip. As you can see, these are the instructions. They are very basic. If you want to add more decorations to your gingerbread house, I suggest you to get extras. I am not used to work on pre-built houses. I find it easier to decorate the house and then put it together. In here, you will find you have to deal with excess royal icing and on this side is a little bit better but on the other side you can see how much it protrudes so we're gonna have to find ways to hide that the house comes sealed in plastic and it has a cardboard bottom but for a simple house it works Usually you can cover the cardboard with some royal icing and make it look like snow. If you prefer, you can stick it to a nicer cardboard and completely hide it or you can cut it. As I shake it around, another thing I find is that the sides of the house protrude a little bit too much for my liking. But for now, I'm just not going to deal with that and the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the board. You can use some kitchen scissors and just cut it away. You have to keep in mind that these gingerbread houses are made for beginners or people that want to do something fast. I am trying to get as close to the house as I possibly can. So you can see the sugar breaking at the bottom. That's excess sugar that I really don't want to deal with. So I'm trying to cut it away with the scissors. I will start working on the walls of the house first. This is the royal icing that comes in the bag. As you can see, it's on the softer side. It works well for what we're working on, but if you're trying to pipe things with this, it will melt. If you want this a little bit softer, you can always add water. Keep in mind that you need to keep this covered so it doesn't dry. So make sure to put a moist towel on top of it to make sure it doesn't dry. If you prefer, you can make your own royal icing. The recipe is posted in the website and there is a tutorial for it. This is the bag that came with the kit. And this is the tip. All you need to do is place the tip inside, push it towards the top, and cut it. Make sure you don't cut it too high because if you cut it too high, then the back might break. 
Now you're ready to fill your piping bag. To make it easy to fill, you can fold the top, place it on a cup, and you can easily fill the bag. Once filled, you want to make sure that the bag is tightly closed. And I usually put the part of the tip on top of a moist towel, making sure it doesn't dry. Royal icing dries really fast and it will clog the tip. You can unclog it with a toothpick or a needle tool. I have a big gap I want to hide on the side of the wall. So you can do this in different ways. You can add some royal icing, try to make it as smooth as possible and let it dry. The only thing with this is that you would have to let it dry overnight fully. If you prefer, you can put some royal icing in a piping bag and just pipe it and then smooth it out. If you're having a hard time making it smooth, you can let it dry for like an hour and when it starts crusting, you can take a piece of paper and smooth it out. This is the fondant that came with the kit and I will say it was hard as a rock. If you're a beginner and you get this, you probably won't know this is not normal. Even for me, it was hard to work with. I had to microwave it for 10 second increments until it was soft. Still, it was really crumbly, so I added some water to it. You can also add glycerin, but most people that don't work with cakes don't have it at home. So I just decided to stick with the water. I was able to make it soft. It was good enough to roll and cut windows. It's really not a lot of fondant. So if you want to cover the whole house with fondant, you need to buy extra for it. To knead it, I put some shortening in my hands, but still there was cracking, it was dry, it wasn't perfect. But as you can see, even though I was able to soften it, it's still dry and cracks a lot. You will be able to roll it if you put some shortening in your hands and try to soften it as much as possible. You can use some cookie cutters. But if you ever have a fondant like this that you're gonna try to use for a cake, I suggest you get a new one. After heating, kneading, and adding some shortening and water, this is what I was able to do. This is the softer I was able to get the fondant. I was able to cut doors and windows with it so you can use it. But if you want to cover the whole house, it's not enough. So if you're a beginner and you never work with fondant, this is how good fondant is supposed to look. You can see it stretches really well and it doesn't crack easily. I decided to place a piece of fondant on top of the size of my cookie house because it was so deep in there, I wanna level it and make it more even with the other side. I have one side that is deeper than the other side and it looks completely weird. Plus all the icing on the sides, it just didn't make it even. So I just wanted to even the whole thing out. I want to make the windows ahead of time so they dry before I place them on the gingerbread house. To make it easier, I am using some post-it notes and I just fold it in half. Once folded in half, you can cut it and that could be your door. When I tested it, I thought that it was too big so I decided to cut half an inch. And I will use this as a template. Then I would take the other side of the post-it and cut a window. I'm cutting a quarter of an inch away and then I'm cutting it more probably around an inch and a quarter. I will measure this in the house and make sure I'm happy with the dimensions. But this is just an idea to how to make those windows for the house real fast. This is a fondant that came with the kit and I told you I did use this to cut windows. You can see it's cracking a little bit but not as bad as before. 
You want to roll it really thin so it looks delicate. Once rolled, you want to use the paper as a template. I am using my bench scraper to cut this, but you can use anything you like. An exacto knife, a pizza cutter, a palette knife, or even just a knife. Once I'm done, I make sure that all the sides are even. So I press the sides with my bench scraper. For my house, I will be using two windows on each side of the house, then one window in the front of the house and one door. I want to make them ahead so they dry. So cut them all at once. Instead of piping the windows, I want to mark them. So I folded my paper and that way I can mark the lines so I can mark them with the bench scraper. Just mark each corner and then you can use a bench scraper or even your palette knife to lightly do an indentation on the fondant. You can leave the windows and door just like this or you can add another layer to make it more interesting. Once I'm done with this, I will place this on top of foam and let it dry. In the meantime, I'm going to keep working with my house. Remember, you want to press hard enough that you can make an indentation in the fondant, but you don't want to press so hard that you cut it. I will be working now on the side of the house and I still have to even that side a little bit more. So I will be rolling my fondant a little bit thicker than I usually use it. I also decided to print the fondant with a wood grain mat. It just gives it a nice detail and it's fast. Once I have the print in it, I'm cutting stripes. The size of the stripes will depend on how much work you want to do. If you cut them too thin, you will need more. If you cut them thicker, you will need less. Once you have your stripes cut, you can add them to the house. You can add some water to it and just glue them and cut the excess. And just like regular siding on a house, you want to put the next stripe a little bit on top of the one that you posted below. You can use water, you can use gum glue, or even royal icing to glue this. Once you have all of them on, you want to make sure they're as even as you can make them even. Once I have done both sides, I just add a little bit of glue to the window or royal icing if you prefer something stronger and just place the window on the wall. The windows should be hard enough to maintain the shape at this point. And as you can see, I did double layers on my windows to give it a little bit more dimension. Now I will be doing the front and back of the house. I did the wood pattern and I took measurements so I could cut it as close as I could to the size of the house. Remember, this would be a lot easier if the house was not pre-built. But since it's pre-built, we need to just measure and cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can fix it on top of the house, but we want to get as close as we can to the right measurements. Remember, it won't be perfect because we still need to deal with the royal icing excess around the fondant, so we will have to fix that. You can see in here the glue I was talking about. That's gonna be your main issue placing this and dealing with that glue. I am adding some gum glue to the fondant and I will be placing it on the gingerbread house. You want to make sure you have a favorite side for the front of your house. As you can see, one side is good and then the other side is on top of the royal icing which is not as nice. So for that side, I will cut the excess so it lays flatter on that side. I roll some more fondant thinly and I am cutting circles. I will be using this for the roof. 
You can measure your roof to make sure that the circles have a nice fit. I tend not to do that. I'm terrible when it comes to that. I go by eye. So I just put my circles and tested it first. With testing, there can be some errors. So I have a big gap and I need to fix it. I don't want my circles to be bigger and I don't want them smaller. So what I did is I separated them enough so it will cover the whole house and then the next line will hide that gap. I do make sure that the gap is not too big. For the next line, you will be putting one of the circles in between two of the circles on the first line. And that way you will cover that whole line. For the edges, you want to cut one of the circles in half. And then you keep doing this for each line. Then you'll fill your whole roof with the circles. It's one of my favorite parts of the house. It's easy and fun. Then do the other side of the roof in the same way and don't worry because at the top you will be hiding that with some decorations. I had a lot of royal eyes in the top border of my house and I felt the need to hide it. I wanted a nice finish and if I would have left it too flat it would have shown through the fondant. I decided to add a piece of fondant in that area so I could lift the other fondant away from the area. This does not have to be perfect. You will be putting something on top of this. Since the royal icing was done so thick in this house, I decided to add another piece on top of the one I already added. This one will smooth everything and then it will hide the royal icing. I roll a nice piece of fondant, you can use fondant with tylos or even gum paste and I'm using this ruler to make a lace edge for my house. I press well and when I lift it I have this pattern. With a needle tool I pull everything out. You can either save the little flowers or you can just dispose them. I'm disposing them since I don't need them but you can even use them around the house if you want. Then you can mark how thick you want this piece to be. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve in your house. Just measure, mark it, and cut it. Now you can come back to your house, add some glue, and just glue it. As you can see, I cut a little bit of an angle before I pressed it. If you're not good at cutting things by eye, you can place it on the house, mark it, and then cut it. That way you will have a good match. Remember, this area will be hidden. You want it nice and clean, but if you don't have a perfect match, don't worry because I will show you how to hide it. For cake competitions, you need to have things perfectly clean, but when I'm working with cakes in real life, I need to be able to move fast. So it's all about clean but fast. I will be doing a wreath for my house and I cut a circle using two circle cutters. You want to let this dry. It doesn't have to be dry overnight but you want to let it dry so you can work easily with it. I am piping on top of it some shells using a tip number 16. In a bowl I have some dredges. Remember Royal icing dries fast, so as soon as you finish piping, you want to be ready to just drop this on the dredges. I am not pressing down on the circle, I'm just making sure that the dredges are getting stuck to the shells. Remember, the shells are still soft, you don't want to crush them, so you have to be careful with this. Once you're done, you can use a palette knife to make sure everything sticks everywhere. Then with your fingers, just press everything. And you can add more if you want to. Now with a small round tip, I'm using a number two. I am adding some dots and I will be adding bigger dredges. You can decorate this any which way you want. 
to cover my edges I did exactly the same as I did with the wreath except I did strips of fondant. I am adding a little bit of royal icing to make sure it sticks really well and then I will be adding the strips. Once I place the strip you can add some dots and add some dredges just like you did with the wreath to make sure everything is well finished. I didn't let these strips dry fully they are a bit moist still and that way I can shape them around the house. Once you're happy with the placement, you can add more drages if you need to. And I added some stars. I use the same technique to finish all the corners in the house, including the sides and the back of the house. I added a silver candy in the center of the roof. This will hide the seam. Then I placed a drop of icing in the center and added a drage. You can clean excess of royal icing with a moist brush. Once I'm done with that, I added some dots around it just for decoration. After I finish piping the dots, once again, I take my brush, it's a little bit moist, and I make sure that I don't have points on top of those dots. This will clean it up. Now you can finish your roof. I am adding dots of royal icing and on top of them I will be adding some dredges. You can use any color of dredges, I am using pearls, but you can use the golden, you can use the silver, or you can use all of them. I am adding a dot of royal icing where the door handle should go and adding a golden dredge. Then I added some royal icing on the back of the wreath and placed it on the house. At this point, you can add more decorations to it if you want it. I added some stars. I decided to add some gold around the windows. It would be easier to do this before you add the windows to the house. I decided to do this last minute, so I am doing it as they are already attached. If this happens to you, just make sure to use a nice small brush. To finish the house, I decided to add some icicles. I piped some dots first and then I just press my tip and just pull it a little bit. If you want longer icicles, just keep piping but stop the pressure and keep pulling. I use a tip number one for this. If you want bigger icicles, you can use a bigger tip. Always use a moist brush to fix anything that you don't like. The pearls don't have to be perfectly piped. It's a really weird corner to work with, but basically it gives an area for the icicles to hold to. In other words, I'm just saying that it makes it easier to pipe the icicles on top of the pearls. Keep in mind, these can be very delicate and if you touch them, you might break them, but they're easily piped again. As you can see, you can do them as long as you want or you can manually cut them. You can add icicles anywhere around the house. And this is the finished look. I was using this for a cake, but you can leave it by itself, add it to a board and add some snow at the bottom of the board or even some fondant. Trages will finish the look or you can just leave it simple. This will depend on what you want to achieve. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. All links are posted in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, visit me on Facebook, Instagram, share your work with me, and visit my blog. Until next time, ta-ta!